I want everybody to follow along with me right here. I'm not just gonna, it says practice finding the vertex, but I'm gonna do as much as I can. I'm gonna state as much as I can on each. You guys are gonna have to write super tiny and it's very important to uh, be organized right here. So let's first practice finding the vertex because if you don't get the vertex right, everything else is gonna be wrong when you're graphing. So uh, let's find the vertex. And we know that the vertex is a coordinate and we know to find that coordinate, we're gonna use the formula x equals negative b over two times a. And we know that when we use that formula, we're gonna use parentheses when we plug in the b and the a value. And we know that the a value is three, the b value is negative six, and the c value is negative four, which we don't even use on the formula. Anyway, let's plug in the negative six into the b spot. Let's plug a three into the a spot, and let's do the math carefully. The minus minus six becomes plus plus, so that is a positive six over a positive six. Yay? X equals one. Yay. So x equals one, okay? That equals one. So the vertex x value is one. Now if I want the y value, all I have to do is plug in the x value of one. So let me rewrite my function. y equals three parentheses squared uh, minus six parentheses <coughs> minus four. Instead of x's, I put parentheses and I'm plugging in the x value of one. I'm doing some math. One squared is one, and then one times three is three. Six times one is six, and of course there's a minus sign, and the minus four at the very end comes down. So when I do three, take away six, take away four, that'll give me negative seven. So my y value negative is negative seven. That's the y value of the vertex. That's all this, uh, instructions are asking for to find the vertex, practice finding the vertex. But I want to take this a step further. I want you guys to tell me, so yeah, this was all the work for finding the vertex. That's great. But I want you to tell me the domain. What's the domain, even though you don't have the graph? X equals all real numbers. Perfect. What if I asked you for the range? The range is either going to be above or below the vertex Y value. So this is definitely above because it's positive. So it is opening up. So it's going to be above. So I know it's going to be y is greater than or equal to. But what is the vertex y value? Negative. negative 7, right? Negative 7. So that's your domain and range right there. Very important stuff. And we found the domain and range without even looking at the graph. That's the cool part about it. How about the, uh, I mean, do we understand that domain and range? Okay, how about this, look, how about this? Let's just do a quick sketch so you can get a little more comfortable. Uh, where's the vertex? It's at one on the X, negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the Y. This vertex is way down here, right? I mean, yeah, you could draw your axis of symmetry right through that vertex, and you can make an XY table to find more coordinates, but we know that it opens what, up or down? Oh. Up, because it's positive. And we know it's kind of narrow, so I could just do a sketch there's a parabola that's kind of narrow opening up. Let's think about the range. The range, your y is either going to be above or below your vertex y value. So it's clearly, it's clearly above, not below. It's above. So that's why it's greater than or equal to. And the vertex y value is negative 7. That's why the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 7. What else could we stay, state? We could say that the y-intercept, the y-intercept is what? If you're rough on that, you got to know that to find the y-intercept, you have to set x equal to 0 and solve. But you don't even have to do that because we know that that's going to give us a c value as an answer. So the y-intercept is the c value negative 4. So these are all details of the graph that we're stating without even graphing it. What do you guys think? All right, so how about I pause right here and you guys write really small and try to do number two. Find the vertex and try to answer as much as you can about this parabola even though it's not graphed. Check it out, vertex. Vertex, it's a coordinate. I'm gonna use x equals negative b over two times a. Using parentheses, negative b over two times parentheses, a. So the b value is 16, the a value is two, the c value is one, which we don't even use. So we have a 16 and a 2. So that's going to give us x equals negative 16 over 4, which means x equals negative 4.
the vertex x value is negative 4. Let's plug it in to find the y. So 2 parentheses squared plus 16 parentheses plus 1. And let's plug in the vertex x value of negative 4 to find the y. Using PEMDAS, we start with exponents first. So negative 4 squared is positive 16. 2 times 16 is 32. 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. You bring down the plus 1, and you just have a subtraction and addition to do, and that's it. So when you go from left to right, 32 take away 64, you get negative 32, and negative 32 plus 1 is negative 31. So the vertex is negative 4, negative 31. So we found the vertex, that's great. How about the domain? X equals all real numbers. How about the range? Uh, y is, now is, is Y going to be above a certain value or below a certain value? Above. Why? How do we know that? Because it's positive. The A value is positive. So Y is above, that means Y is greater than or equal to? Y is greater than or equal to the Y value of the vertex, guys. Negative 31. I know that that sounds weird. But that's your range. Y is greater than or equal to negative 31. You have your domain. You have your range. How about Y-intercept? What's the Y-intercept going to be? It's going to be 1. Because if you set X equal to 0, both of these guys turn to 0, and your answer will be 1. So there's a ty I have a typo. Yours says. Uh, Negative 2, right? Or negative x squared? Doesn't have a 2? OK. So let's go with that. Let's graph that one with negative 1x squared minus 10x minus 4. So let's find the vertex. The vertex is a coordinate. x equals negative b over 2 times a. Negative parentheses over 2 times parentheses. The a value is negative 1. The b value is negative 10. The c value is negative 4. So the B value is negative 10. Plug that in for your B. The A value is negative 1. Sorry about this mess. Yeah, it's a negative 1. And we're going to end up with a positive 10 up on top divided by a negative 2 on the bottom. So it's 10 divided by negative 2. So what's your X value going to be? Negative 5. Excellent. So that's our vertex X value of negative 5. We still need the, the Y value. How do we find the Y value? Plug it in. So we have negative x squared minus 10x minus 4. And of course, we are plugging in the negative 5 right in there. It's very important that we understand PEMDAS or use a calculator, because a calculator won't mess up. But right here, you really do have a negative 5 squared, which changes the positive 25. And then it has a negative in front. I see students always see the minus minus and they want to change the plus plus. Changing minus minus to plus plus comes from multiplication. Exponents have to happen before multiplication. So you have to do the exponent first, get positive 25 right here, bring down the negative in front of the 25, making it a negative 25. And then we have negative 10 times negative 5, that'll give us a positive 50. And then we have a minus 4 that comes down. So negative 25 plus 50, that's positive 25. 25, take away 4, that will be what? 21. I hope you guys are writing small. The y value is 21. So I have my vertex at negative 5, positive 21. And that's all this paper asks for. But let's take it a step further. Could somebody tell me the y-intercept value? If I were to graph it, where would it cross the y-axis? 0, negative 4. Or you could just say the c value negative 4. Perfect. Y-intercept. How about the domain? I don't even have it graphed. I don't know what the domain is by looking at it, but I know it if I know the algebra. X equals all real numbers. Perfect. And the range? The range are my Y values. Now, if this one's a little bit, you have to visualize, guys. This parabola, does it open up or down? Down, down because it's negative. Y is, less than y is less than or equal to so let's write that down. Y is less than or equal to what? The Y value of our vertex, 21. And man, we have stated so much about this parabola without even having it graphed, without even looking at it. 
But, I mean, you guys, we're doing awesome here. The domains, x equals all real numbers, the range is going to be all your y values below the 21. It touches the 21, so y is less than or equal to 21. So we could stay almost everything about a parabola without even graphing it, without even looking at it. Shall we do one more? How did you get rid of the 25? How did I get rid of the 25? Um, this 25, well, negative 25 plus 50, that's positive 25. It's like owing $25, having 50, you're going to have 25 left over. And then 25 take away 4 is 21. That's how we got the y value of the vertex. Let's find the vertex. The vertex is a coordinate. You got to write small, though. There's not much space. You're going to use the formula x equals negative b over 2 times a. That's going to be x equals negative parentheses over 2 times parentheses. Your a value is negative 1. Your b value is 6. Your c value is 2. So the b value is 6. The a value is negative 1. When you do the math, you're going to get a negative 6 divided by a negative 2, which means x equals positive 3. You agree? Yes. So the vertex x value is positive 3. We still need the y value. And in order to do that, we're going to plug in that x value of negative 3 into the original equation. y equals negative x squared plus 6 times x plus 2. And let's plug in the 3 right in there. Doing the math, 3 squared is 9. Of course, it has a negative sign in front of it. And then 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 at the very end. 9, negative 9 plus 18, that's 9. And 9 plus 2, that is 11. So the vertex x value is 3, and the y value is 11. We found the vertex, but let's go further. Can we state the y-intercept of this equation? Yes. yes. How, do you find, how do you find the y-intercept? You set x equal to 0, which means that the c value is your answer. So what's the y-intercept? 2. Boom. Y-intercept is 2. And we're, we're stating this even without graphing. Um, how about what is the domain? Domain is x equals, x equals all real numbers. And how about the range? This one's a little tricky. The range are your y values, and your parabola is either going to be above or below your vertex y value. So what do you guys think? Is it going to be above or below? Below, because the a value is negative. That means it has to open down. And below what? Below the vertex y value, which is 11. So how do we say that it's at 11 and below? We're going to say y is less than or equal to 11. So we've stated everything we can right here, a lot of information about a parabola that we haven't even seen or graphed. We know the vertex. We know the y-intercept. We know the domain and the range. Uh, we could even take it further and say, what's the axis of symmetry? Now, I know. If I were graphing it, all I have to do is draw the dotted line right through the vertex. But what is that equation of the axis of symmetry? It's simply x equals the value of where your vertex is at, the x value of where your vertex is at. What, what's the x value of your vertex? Three. It's 3. So the equation is x equals 3. So you could, we've stated all this information about a parabola we haven't even seen just by knowing how to find the y-intercept how to state the domain range, axis of symmetry, all that good stuff. And that's about it.